In 1998, King's Dominion in Doswell, Virginia opened Volcano the Blast Coaster, a revolutionary launched roller coaster that was wildly acclaimed by park goers. Unfortunately, after over 20 years of operation, the attraction would meet its untimely demise. But how could such a beloved fan favorite coaster meet such a bitter end? Let's take a look at the rise and fall of Volcano the Blast Coaster right here on Theme Park Crazy. In the late 1970s, the newly opened King's Dominion proved to be a smash hit with the public. Additions like the racing coaster Rebel Yell and the shuttle loop launch coaster King Cobra proved to be quite successful. So in 1979, the park decided to make its biggest investment yet, a new themed area named the Lost World. At a whopping $17 million, this new area of the park consisted of a massive man-made mountain packed with new and exciting attractions. A spinning ride named Time Shaft, a boat ride named Journey to Atlantis, and a dark ride named Journey to the Land of Dews. Over the years, the mountain's attractions would go through several changes. First off, Journey to Atlantis would receive a spookier makeover and would be renamed the Haunted River. Furthermore, the Land of Dews would be renamed Smurf Mountain in 1984, naturally being rethemed to the hit 80s cartoon The Smurfs. Finally, the nausea-inducing time shaft would be constantly refurbished due to vomit-based corrosion on the structure. These attractions would operate inside the mountain all the way until their simultaneous closure in 1995. By then, the Smurf's popularity had severely dwindled, and the recent purchase of the park by Paramount sent its investment strategy into a new direction. In the mid-90s, the amusement industry was laser-focused on thrill rides, and Paramount Parks wanted to drum up support from adrenaline junkies. As the mountain stayed dormant, King's Dominion and its sister park King's Island would open Outer Limits Flight of Fear in 1996. This was a state-of-the-art launch roller coaster by American manufacturer Premier Rides. It would be the first coaster on Earth to use a magnetic launch system known as Linear Induction Motor, or LIM for short. Though the prototype system had its technical issues, the ride itself was universally acclaimed in the industry. Not only could the indoor experience operate in the rain, but its intense inversion-packed ride experience made it especially appealing to thrill-seekers. It would receive three awards from the International Association of Amusement Parks and Attractions, so by then it was official. LIM launch coasters were the hottest new thing on the market. Meanwhile, Swiss manufacturer Intamin would develop their own LIM launch coaster to supposedly compete with Premier and install the LIM system on an inverted coaster. They would develop two new coaster models with this system, a shuttle coaster named the Impulse and a full circuit coaster named the Suspended Catapult Coaster. Intamin's latter development quickly caught the eye of King's Dominion, who was looking for a great big thrill ride to replace their mountain's old attractions. Though they had just installed Flight of Fear, Intamin's new creation creation would be even more exciting. A launched inverted coaster would combine high-speed thrills with the open feeling of passengers' feet dangling. Within months of Flight of Fear's opening, development was well underway for an all-new prototype launch coaster. This $20 million investment would be built both outside and inside the mountain. Construction proved to be complex. Several holes would be drilled into the mountain for the ride supports and encircling track. Additionally, the mountain's interior would be completely gutted out. Smurf Mountain and the time shaft were completely removed, while remnants of the Haunted River would be reused for the new ride's queue line. The most defining modification by far would be cropping the top off the mountain's peak and widening the opening. This would turn the mountain into a volcano, with the planned ride sending passengers upwards and outwards through the opening. Though initially planned to open in the spring of 1998, the prototype inverted launch system proved to be a technical headache. Test trains would reportedly roll back on the main launch failing to make it past the volcano's opening. The park's public relations manager Betsy Moss would describe the ride as quote, a highly technical prototype that required fine-tuning to get it to run consistently. Months of rigorous testing would ensue in 1998, and engineers worked around the clock to fix the ride's issues. The eventual solution involved removing half of the ride vehicle seats. This would decrease the train's weight, making it much easier for the underpowered launch system to send them out of the volcano, though it would also decrease the ride's capacity by half, which 
which would be an issue during that year. Fortunately though, the trains would return to full capacity in 1999, after more electrical power was allegedly added to the ride. These initial issues with the launch system would delay the ride's opening. While originally scheduled for a spring 1998 debut, it wouldn't be until August 3rd that year that the ride would finally open to the public. The ride experience went as followed. Passengers would start by boarding the vehicles at the base of the volcano. After a slow turn to the left, the trains would reach the first launch. This 70 mile per hour launch would send guests outside into a 200 degree bank turn back towards the mountain. The trains would then re-enter the volcano, hitting another set of LIMs. This launch would send guests upwards, shooting them out of the volcano's opening through a one-of-a-kind inversion known as a rollout. This launch was the star moment of the ride, and if that wasn't cool enough, a special fire effect was added to give it a more volcano-like appearance. Needless to say, it was the closest thing you could get to a volcano in the state of Virginia. After emerging from the top, the trains would maneuver around the volcano's structure with three jubilant heartline rolls to prevent any monotony. Shortly after encircling the structure and inverting several times, the trains would hit the final brake run and return to the boarding station. The coaster was an instant success and would become the star attraction of King's Dominion. Newspapers from all over the country would cover this ride, and it was proudly labeled as quote-unquote Virginia's only active volcano. Its dreamlike appearance and unmatched intensity was truly groundbreaking for its time. Nobody had seen anything like it before, and park fans would flock to the ride like wasps to a soda fountain. This was truly the kind of attraction that would take thrills and theming to the next level. From 2001 to 2014, it would even rank among the top 50 steel coasters in the world by Amusement Today's Golden Ticket Awards. Indeed, this coaster would set a new standard in thrill ride innovation. Unfortunately, the exact innovation that made Volcano a hit would ultimately lead to its downfall. In no uncertain terms, this coaster would be a 20-year maintenance nightmare for the park. Not only was it a prototype, but it would end up being the only suspended catapult coaster ever built by Intamin. Over the years, parks would opt for the smaller and less expensive impulse coaster instead. The suspended catapult coaster's lack of demand would make replacement parts especially hard to acquire, ballooning Volcano's maintenance costs to dangerously high levels. Maintenance was not only expensive, but difficult as well. The large, mountainous structure made accessing the track and supports especially challenging. For the track circumnavigating the volcano, workers would start on the ground by hooking a rope to a track section. After ascending the volcano's opening, the other end of the rope would be hooked up to the rollout inversion. Workers would then zip line across to work on the desired track section. As for the track inside the volcano, workers would have to hook up to harnesses and then be lowered down the opening. The amount of time and effort to maintain the coaster was unprecedented. It could easily be argued that if it weren't for the mountainous structure, work on the coaster would be significantly easier. Another issue with the ride was the launch system. Though the LIM system would evolve over the years, the one used by Volcano was young and underdeveloped. The system would often underperform, failing to launch the trains fast enough to complete the first inversion. On the other hand, despite the trouble it was to operate, the ride's popularity was unmatched. Guests loved this ride, and the park would do everything they could to keep it running. Over the years though, the coaster would prove to be more trouble than it was worth. Perhaps the most infamous example of this happened in 2006. That year, a serious incident would occur on the ride. After one of the trains completed the second launch, a loud noise was heard. The ride was not stopped, and another train was dispatched. When the second train hit the launch, a loud pop was heard, and riders would be struck with flying debris. Two people were taken to the hospital, with one man reported reportedly suffering a cut above his eye, and a 12-year-old boy reportedly suffering a leg injury. The cause of the accident was later found by the park to be a broken track bolt, which allegedly sent pieces of the launch system flying at guests. The coaster would be closed for an unspecified amount of time before reopening later that year. While no major accidents would occur after this, this incident was a testament to how serious the ride's maintenance demands were. The ride's downtime was an ongoing issue throughout its run at the park. Its old launch system and unique components were absolutely dreadful to deal with, and the ride would break down on a regular basis. Still though, Volcano would maintain its immense popularity with guests. Even after the addition of the massive Intimidator 305 in 2010, Volcano still reigned supreme in guests' popularity. It was clear that as long as the park could keep it running, they would do so for the sake of its popularity. But as the ride reached its 20th anniversary, things would take a turn for the worst. A few weeks into the 2018 season, Volcano would be 
closed indefinitely. Many had speculated that a new part had to be ordered, one that had to be specially made in Europe and shipped over to the park. To make matters worse, a King's Dominion fan site named KDFans.com had reported that all ride operators on Volcano were permanently assigned to other attractions. Fans had also reported several holes around the mountain structure. These were all bad omens for the ride, but the idea of such a popular coaster being torn down was still dismissed by many. Despite reportedly testing a few times, Volcano would stay closed for the rest of the season, and park fans wondered whether or not it would reopen. Behind the scenes, park officials had confirmed what many had feared the most. The ride was unsalvageable and had reached the end of its service life. Since it was a one-of-a-kind prototype, it couldn't simply be retracked and repaired. Many of its components had been reportedly discontinued by the manufacturer. Plus, it was built into a mountainous facade, which made things even more complicated. Many had speculated that at this point, the only way to fix the ride would be to completely redo it from scratch. New track, new mountain, new components, new everything. Sadly though, such a daunting task was far beyond the park's resources, both in financial and practical terms. This type of roller coaster hadn't been built in decades, so they couldn't just simply order another one. And as if that weren't bad enough, the ride was reportedly so far beyond repair that the park was unable to give fans one last opportunity to ride it. Continuing to operate a ride in such disrepair would severely endanger guests and would risk another accident like in 2006 or worse. Even if the park did come up with a temporary solution, it still wouldn't be enough to meet their standards of reliability. After taking all of these factors into account, King's Dominion would publicly announce the coaster's closure on February 8, 2019. The park's communications manager Maggie Sellers wrote, After thorough evaluation, the decision has been made to remove Volcano the Blast Coaster. This wasn't an easy decision for us because we know that people love this one-of-a-kind coaster. However, over time, it became nearly impossible to keep the ride up to our high standards of reliability and guest satisfaction, and for these reasons we had to make the tough call. We apologize to anyone who is inconvenienced by the removal, but hope they will understand that it was done to enhance the overall guest experience here at King's Dominion. Park fans were devastated by the announcement, with many lamenting the loss of such a unique unique attraction. At the start of the 2019 season, fans would pay tribute to the coaster by turning its entrance into a makeshift memorial. Demolition would begin soon afterwards, with everything, including the historic mountain, being torn down. Within weeks, the entire spot would be a pile of rubble. Since then, park officials have been reportedly eager to fill in the empty space. Many alleged options are being considered, including a new B&M wing coaster. There's no doubt King's Dominion will do their best to find a worthy successor. However, many say that the unique experience of Volcano will never be topped. It really was a once-in-a-lifetime attraction, and considering the recent innovations in theme park rides, it was truly ahead of its time. No matter what replaces it though, Volcano the Blast Coaster will remain one of the most sorely missed attractions in roller coaster history. Thank you all so much, and if you want to support me on Patreon, you can do so once again at the link in the description. Thanks for watching everyone. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can check out my website at themeparkcrazy.com. This is Theme Park Crazy, and I'll see you all next time.